Vortis's serrated claws sank into soft human flesh as the Taktak -tak warrior snatched the wailing child from his bed, not knowing he had just kidnapped a pure human boy from the birthplace of humanity, Earth itself. The remote human colony burned as Taktak -tak raiders stormed through the settlement, killing and capturing. Vortis scuttled over the bleeding corpses of the boy's parents, his insectoid legs clicking on shattered glass. The alien's compound eyes gleamed as he held the struggling child against his chitinous thorax. Young Eugene Morgan screamed and thrashed in the monster's grasp. Silence, worm! Vortis hissed, antennae twitching. The boy only screamed louder. Vortis struck him hard across the face, splitting the child's lip. Eugene tasted blood and fell silent, tears streaming down his bruised cheeks. The Tak Tak carried Eugene out of the smoke-filled house and into the chaos consuming the colony. Humans ran in panic as more insectoid raiders smashed through doors and windows, dragging children from their beds. Pulse rifle fire crackled, flames crackled, cries of terror filled the night. A dark, angular starship squatted in a nearby field, anti-grav engines humming. Vortis carried the boy up the boarding ramp and into a stark holding cell. He flung Eugene inside. The boy landed hard on the metal floor, the wind knocked from his lungs. Through the cell's force field he saw dozens of other children, human and alien, cowering in cages. All bore expressions of abject despair. Eugene looked up as heavy footfalls approached. A massive tak tak loomed over him, his carapace pitted with battle scars. One eye was a glowing cybernetic implant. What world did this whelp come from? the huge alien rasped, mandibles clacking. An unregistered human colony, Captain Kaztor, Vortis replied, backwater lightly defended. Good, their young sell well at auction, Kaztor said, compound eyes swivelling to Eugene, especially when properly broken first. Kaztor stalked away, barking commands. The ship jolted as it took off. Eugene caught a final glimpse of his ruined colony through a porthole, a pyre of flames and death. The image seared into his brain. Mama, Daddy, Eugene sobbed. He sank to the floor, shoulders shaking. He squeezed his eyes shut, trying to block out the terrified cries of caged children. In the cell beside his, a captured Trillian girl wept piteously. Eugene's fingernails gouged into his palms. These monsters had killed his family, destroyed his home. Now they meant to sell him like livestock. No, he would not break, would not bend. Eugene was human, and he would show these aliens what that meant. Heart anger crystallized into icy resolve. Eugene Morgan would escape, would fight, and somehow, some way, he would have his revenge on the monsters who had taken everything from him. He was only a boy, but he was a boy from Earth, and the galaxy would soon learn what that meant. The Tak Tak ship shuddered as it docked at Kraxen Hub, a sprawling space station known as a hive of scum and villainy. The airlock hissed open. Vortis shoved Eugene forward, the boy stumbling into a grimy corridor bathed in neon light. The captive children were marched single file through the dingy halls, the clicks and hisses of alien languages filling the air. They entered a cavernous chamber that stank of sweat and desperation. A stage stood at the far end, cages of weeping children lining the walls. Eugene's heart hammered as he recognized an auction block. Scores of disreputable aliens filled the room, all manner of species from across the galaxy, united in their cruelty. The captives were shoved into holding pens. Eugene gripped the bars with white knuckles as Vortis leered at him. One by one, sobbing children were dragged on stage and sold to the highest bidders. The boy from Trelia went to a hulking basilisk for manual labor. A pair of Twi'lek girls were sold into a life of dancing for a lecherous Toydarian. Eugene watched in revulsion as his fellow captives met terrible fates. Lot 47, healthy male human child, approximately eight years old, the auctioneer announced. Vortis hauled Eugene from the cage and thrust him onto the block. Bright lights blinded the boy as the auctioneer extolled his virtues. The crowd pressed closer, eager for a look at the rare human child. One thousand credits, a bloated slug of a hut shouted. Twelve hundred, countered an augmented Quillotane with a cybernetic eye.
the two entered a fierce bidding war, the price climbing higher as they fought for the prize. Eugene's heart sank. Either would be a cruel master. Just as the Krillitane seemed poised to win, a cloaked figure entered the room. The crowd parted as he strode forward, aura crackling with authority. Five thousand credits, the figure said calmly. Silence fell. None dared challenge him. He threw back his hood, revealing an aged tuk-tuk with an ornate carapace. The boy is yours, Lord Zorel, the auctioneer said, bowing. Zorel climbed the stage, grabbing Eugene by the arm. As he led the boy away, Vortis seethed with rage and jealousy. Zorel's quarters were lavishly appointed, a far cry from the squalor of the station. He studied Eugene with compound eyes that seemed to pierce his soul. Though interest me, boy, Zorel clicked, such defiance in the face of despair. What world spawned one such as you? Eugene lifted his chin. I come from Earth, a world of power and wonder beyond your imaginings. You're a fool to enslave me. Earth? Zorel said, intrigued. I have not heard of this planet, but we shall see if you speak truth. He clapped his hands. Servants scurried in, bearing a tray of exotic fruits and a silken tunic. You are no longer mere chattel, boy. You are to be my cupbearer. Attend me well and your life will be comfortable, but defy me. Zorel's mandibles clicked in threat. I will never serve you, Eugene spat. Eugene squared his shoulders. I'll never stop fighting, not until I'm back on Earth. The nobleman clicked his mandibles in amusement. Very well, serve me, and perhaps one day I'll take you to this earth. And so Eugene became Zorel's cupbearer, fetching his drinks and cleaning his quarters. But when his master was absent, the boy explored. The mansion was a maze of twisting corridors and hidden chambers. Eugene checked every door, hoping to find an escape route. One day, he discovered a room pulsing with strange energies. Eugene crept inside, eyes widening. The chamber was filled with alien machines, holograms flickering in the air. In the center floated a glowing star map. Eugene approached, heart pounding. He reached out, fingers passing through the hologram. It shifted, zooming in on a spiral arm. Eugene studied the glittering worlds, searching for a familiar shape. There, a blue and green orb. Earth. But it was so far from the Kraxen hub. Eugene's shoulders slumped. No, he wouldn't give up. The human boy examined the other devices, mind racing. The technology was beyond anything he'd seen, but humans were clever, adaptable. Eugene would learn their secrets. Night after night he snuck into the chamber. Eugene pried open control panels, studying the complex inner workings. He scavenged tools, tinkering and exploring. Slowly he began to understand. Vortis watched from the shadows, compound eyes glittering with malice. The tuk tuk seethed at being outbid. Now he was just a lowly guard in Zorel's mansion, but he would have his revenge. Vortis saw Eugene sneaking off and followed, mandibles quivering in anticipation. At last a chance to catch the brat in an act of defiance. But when Vortis peered into the tech room, he froze. The human was manipulating the machines with shocking skill. Vortis realized the boy was far cleverer than he'd assumed. He needed to find another way to destroy him. While cleaning Zorel's study, Eugene overheard a meeting between his master and a battle-scarred Tuk-Tuk in military garb. He crept closer, listening at the door. The invasion of Xanthoria is proceeding as planned, General, Zorel said. Excellent. Their medical technology will advance our cloning research by decades. Eugene frowned. Xanthoria. He'd seen that world on the star map, a peaceful planet known for its healers. He couldn't let the tuk-tuk slaughter them. As the general left, Eugene spied a portable hollow projector on Zorel's desk. A plan formed. That device could warn the Xanthorians. Eugene emerged into the night air, projector clutched to his chest. He'd never flown a spacecraft, but he was a fast learner. The human boy sprinted towards a gleaming shuttle. A heavy hand seized his shoulder, yanking him back. Eugene cried out. Vortis loomed over him, eyes blazing with triumph. Stealing from our master. I knew you couldn't be trusted.
The tuk-tuk struck Eugene viciously, sending him crashing to the ground. The projector skittered across the pad. Eugene tasted blood. He looked up at Vortis, fury boiling in his gut. No, he wouldn't let this monster win. Not again. The human launched himself at Vortis with a roar of defiance. Fists pummeled exoskeletons as Eugene and Vortis rolled across the landing pad, a tangle of flailing limbs and snapping mandibles. The human boy lashed out with every ounce of strength, desperate to reclaim the stolen hollow projector. But Vortis was a seasoned warrior, his chitinous armor absorbing the blows. With a hiss, the tak tak guard seized Eugene's arm and twisted, pain lancing through the boy's shoulder. Eugene gritted his teeth and kicked at Vortis's leg joint, feeling a satisfying crack. The alien stumbled, his grip loosening just enough for Eugene to wrench free. The boy scrambled to his feet, snatching up the projector. He sprinted for the nearest shuttle, heart pounding. Vortis roared in fury, giving chase. Eugene dove through the open hatch, smashing the door controls. The ramp slammed shut, just as Vortis slammed into it, denting the metal. Eugene raced to the cockpit, throwing himself into the pilot's seat. His fingers flew over the unfamiliar controls, mirroring the movements he'd practiced in Zorel's tech room. The engines roared to life. Eugene gripped the joystick, the shuttle lurching off the landing pad. A flash of movement caught his eye. Vortis had pried the ramp open, clambering into the cargo hold with murder in his compound eyes. Eugene wrenched the stick, sending the alien crashing into the bulkhead. The shuttle rocketed away from the mansion, cracks and hub spires glittering below. Eugene punched in coordinates for Xanthoria, praying he wasn't too late. The stars blurred as the hyperdrive engaged, the small craft hurtling through the cosmos. In the hold, Vortis dragged himself upright, fury boiling in his guts. The human whelp had made a fool of him for the last time. He would flay the boy alive, present his hide to Zorel as a trophy. Mandibles quivering in anticipation, the tuk tuk stalked towards the cockpit. Eugene's skin prickled, sensing danger. He engaged the autopilot and crept back into the hold, makeshift club in hand. The shuttle was small, offering few places to hide. He would have to face Vortis head on. The tuk tuk loomed in the shadows, eyes glittering with malice. Nowhere to run now, worm, he hissed. I will break you slowly, savoring your screams. Eugene lifted his chin in defiance. You'll have to catch me first, bug brain. With a roar, Vortis charged, scything talons slashing the air. Eugene rolled aside, bringing the club down on the alien's thorax. Vortis barely flinched. His backhand caught Eugene in the ribs, sending him crashing into a stack of crates. Breath whooshing from his lungs, Eugene staggered upright, raising his club. Vortis stalked closer, a predator cornering wounded prey. The boy backed away, mind racing. He was outmatched in size and strength. He needed to be smart. Eugene's heel caught on a loose floor panel, nearly sending him sprawling. An idea sparked. He ripped the panel free, flinging it like a frisbee. It smashed into Vortis's face, buying Eugene a precious second. The boy dove past Vortis, sliding beneath a row of dangling cargo straps. He snatched a strap, looping it around the alien's ankles and yanking with all his strength. Vortis toppled, smashing through a crate. Eugene pounced, makeshift garrote in hand. He leapt onto the tak taks back, locking the strap around his neck, pulling with every fibre of his being. Vortis thrashed and writhed, but Eugene held on, teeth clenched. The alien's struggles weakened, his eyes bulging. With a final shudder, Vortis went limp. Eugene held the garret a moment longer, making sure his foe was unconscious. He released his grip, panting, adrenaline surging through his veins. As he made to stand, his foot knocked against the shattered crate, revealing a hidden compartment beneath the splintered wood. Eugene's eyes widened. The compartment was filled with sleek, high-powered weapons, far beyond anything a civilian shuttle should carry. The implications raced through his mind. This was no ordinary cargo ship. It was a smuggler's vessel. Eugene reached into the compartment, fingers closing around the grip of a plasma rifle. He lifted it free, marveling at the weapon's deadly elegance. The shuttle shuddered, 
a deep boom echoing through the hull. Eugene raced to the cockpit, peering out the viewport. His blood ran cold. A massive warship loomed before him, bristling with cannons, a craft he recognized all too well. Castor's flagship. The pirate's voice crackled over the comms, dripping with cruel amusement. Well, well, if it isn't my favorite escaped slave, I warned you, boy. The galaxy is a hard place for a whelp alone. The shuttle thudded into the flagship's docking bay, the hatch hissing open. Eugene gripped his stolen rifle, pulse pounding in his ears. He would not be taken easily. Castor himself strode into the hold, flanked by leering pirates. The warlord's cybernetic eye fixed on Eugene, glowing with twisted pleasure. As the pirates advanced, Eugene spotted Vortis stirring behind them, forgotten in the shadows. A desperate gamble kindled in the boy's mind. The enemy of my enemy. Eugene dove for cover. Plasma bolts filling the air, he snapped off shot after shot, dropping pirates with precise aim. Kaztor roared in outrage, returning fire. The shuttle descended into chaos, Eugene and Vortis fighting side by side against overwhelming odds. The boy felt a thrill of savage joy. He was done running, done being prey. These monsters would feel his wrath. In the melee, Eugene spied an opportunity. He charged up the ramp into Kaztor's ship, seeking the warship's shuttle bay. Vortis followed, watching his back a grudging respect kindling in his compound eyes. They burst into the bay, startling a cluster of technicians. Eugene stunned them with his rifle, sprinting for the nearest shuttle. Vortis sealed the hangar doors, buying them precious seconds. As Eugene prepped the shuttle for launch, Vortis hesitated, mandibles clicking. This changes nothing between us, human. When we reach safety, our truce ends. The shuttle rocketed out of the hangar, Castor's warship receding behind them. Eugene plotted a course for Xanthoria, heart racing. He had to warn them of the coming invasion. As he made to engage the hyperdrive, a glint caught his eye. There, nestled in the co-pilot's seat, was a small glowing orb. Eugene picked it up, transfixed by its pulsing light. Somehow he sensed this strange artifact was important, powerful. He glanced at Vortis, who eyed the orb covetously. The tac tac reached for it, but Eugene snatched it away. Uh uh, my ship, my loot. Insolent whelp, Vortis snarled, but made no move to take it by force. Despite himself, the alien was impressed by the human spirit. Eugene pocketed the orb as the stars blurred into the swirling vortex of hyperspace. He didn't know what challenges awaited him on Xanthoria but he had a feeling this strange artifact would be key to overcoming them. As he leaned back in his seat, Eugene allowed himself a small smile. Against all odds, he was still alive, still fighting, and he would keep fighting until he found his way back to Earth. Until he made the monsters who destroyed his life pay. The shuttle hurtled through the cosmos, carrying a young boy and his unlikely companion towards an uncertain future, and a destiny greater than either could imagine. The stolen shuttle shuddered violently, alarms blaring as Eugene fought to keep the craft under control. Vortis clung to the co-pilot's chair, compound eyes wide with fear. The human boy gritted his teeth, knuckles white on the controls, as he tried to coax more power from the failing engines. But it was no use. The shuttle was out of fuel and the ground was coming up fast. Brace for impact, Eugene shouted throwing his arms up to shield his face. The shuttle slammed into the sand with a deafening crunch of metal, skidding and tumbling across the desert landscape. Eugene was thrown from his seat, his head cracking against the bulkhead. Stars exploded across his vision as he slumped to the floor unconscious. When Eugene came to, he found himself lying in a pool of shadow, the sweltering heat of the alien sun beating down on the wrecked shuttle. Vortis loomed over him, Chitinous face, unreadable. For a moment, Eugene tensed, expecting the tac tac to finish him off. But Vortis merely extended a clawed hand, pulling the human boy to his feet. We must find shelter, the alien clicked, antennae twitching. This world is hostile to life. Eugene nodded, wincing at the throbbing pain in his skull. He staggered out of the shuttle, shielding his eyes against the glare of the twin suns. 
the landscape was a barren expanse of red sand and jagged rock formations stretching to the horizon in every direction. But there, jutting from the desert, like the skeletal remains of some gargantuan beast, was the wreckage of an ancient spacecraft. Eugene and Vortis exchanged a glance, then set off across the dunes, the sand shifting treacherously beneath their feet. As they drew closer to the derelict ship, Eugene could make out more details, the pitted, corroded hull, the gaping holes torn in the fuselage, the alien script etched into the metal. It was clear this vessel had lain here for centuries, perhaps millennia. They clambered through a breach in the hull, finding themselves in a dark, cavernous chamber. Eugene activated the flashlight on his stolen plasma rifle, the beam cutting through the gloom. What he saw made his stomach turn. The mummified remains of the alien crew lay strewn about the chamber, their desiccated bodies contorted in positions of agony. Some still clutched weapons in their bony hands, as if they had died fighting some unseen foe. Eugene swallowed hard, forcing down the bile rising in his throat. As they ventured deeper into the ship, Eugene's light fell upon a bank of flickering screens and pulsing control panels. He approached cautiously, studying the alien technology. It was unlike anything he had seen before, all organic curves and pulsing lights. But there was something familiar about it, too, a certain logic to the layout that his human mind could grasp. With a few tentative keystrokes, Eugene brought the system to life. Holographic displays burst into existence around him, bathing the chamber in an eerie glow. A face appeared on the central screen, a featureless mask of swirling energy. Greetings, the face said, its voice a metallic whisper. I am Zephyr, artificial intelligence of the Starship Harbinger. How may I assist you? Eugene glanced at Vortis, who hissed softly. The boy turned back to the screen, choosing his words carefully. Zephyr, can you tell us what happened to your crew? The AI was silent for a moment, as if contemplating the question. When it spoke again, there was a note of sorrow in its synthetic voice. My crew perished long ago, killed by a malfunction in the ship's reactor core. I have been alone ever since, trapped in this tomb of metal and memory. Eugene felt a pang of sympathy for the lonely AI. He knew all too well the pain of isolation, of being ripped away from everything he knew and loved. Zephyr, do you know anything about this? He held up the glowing orb which pulsed softly in his palm. The AI's face flickered, its voice taking on a tone of urgency. The quantum singularity. You must keep it safe, Eugene Morgan. It is a key component of a weapon capable of unimaginable destruction. In the wrong hands, it could mean the end of countless worlds. Eugene's eyes widened. How did the AI know his name? Before he could ask, Vortis lunged forward, snatching the orb from Eugene's grasp. This power belongs to the Tuk Tuk, the alien snarled, mandibles quivering with greed. With it we will crush all who oppose us. No, Eugene cried, tackling Vortis to the ground. They grappled furiously in the cramped confines of the ship, rolling and clawing at each other like rabid beasts. Eugene managed to wrench the orb free, but in doing so, his elbow struck a pulsing control panel. The ship shuddered, ancient engines rumbling to life with a deafening roar. Eugene and Vortis were thrown off their feet as the craft blasted free of the desert sands, hurtling into the starry void of space. As they struggled to regain their footing, Zephyr's face loomed on the screen, its voice now cold and commanding. Intruder alert, the AI intoned. Initiating defensive protocols, prepare to be eliminated. Eugene and Vortis exchanged a look of pure dread. They were trapped aboard an alien warship with a malfunctioning AI, hurtling through space with no idea where they were going. And worst of all, they had a doomsday weapon in their possession, one that could spell the end of everything they knew. As the ancient ship plunged deeper into the uncharted reaches of space, Eugene clutched the glowing orb to his chest, wondering not for the first time if he would ever see Earth again, or if, in his quest to return home, he had unleashed something far worse upon the unsuspecting galaxy. The ancient spaceship lurched violently as it dropped out of hyperspace, the sudden deceleration slamming Eugene and Vortis against their restraints, 
alarms blared, red lights flashing as the vessel shuddered and groaned. Through the cracked viewscreen, a massive space station loomed, its sleek lines and gleaming spires a stark contrast to the battered ship. The Galactic Confederation, Zephyr intoned, its voice crackling with static. A bastion of peace and knowledge in a troubled universe. Sao Jin leaned forward, eyes wide with wonder. But before he could voice his amazement, a harsh klaxon sounded. A fleet of angular warships blinked into existence around the station, their hulls emblazoned with the dreaded emblem of the Tak Tak. Attention unidentified vessel, a grating voice blared over the comm. Surrender immediately and prepare to be boarded. Hand over the human and the orb. Zephyr, we need to get out of here, the boy said, voice tight. The AI's holographic face flickered, its features contorting in a mix of determination and sorrow. I cannot allow the Tak Tak to possess the orb. Or you, Eugene. You are our last hope. With a crackle of energy, a panel slid open, revealing a cramped escape pod. Zephyr's voice echoed from within. Enter quickly. I will guide you to safety. Eugene hesitated, looking back at the battered bridge, the ship that had become an unlikely sanctuary. What about you? My time has long passed, Zephyr replied, a note of finality in its synthetic voice. But yours is just beginning. Go, Eugene Morgan of Earth. Find the rebels. Stop the Tak Tak. With a final grateful nod, Eugene clambered into the pod, Vortis close behind. The hatch sealed with a hiss as the tiny craft jettisoned from the ship, hurtling towards a distant moon. Behind them, the ancient vessel shuddered, its reactor core overloading in a blinding flash. The explosion engulfed the nearest Tak Tak ships, consuming them in a maelstrom of fire and shrapnel. Eugene watched through the pod's rear viewport, a lump forming in his throat. Zephyr had sacrificed itself to buy them a chance. The pod shook as it entered the moon's atmosphere, heat shields glowing cherry red. Eugene and Vortis braced for impact, the alien's claws digging into the boy's arm. With a jarring thud, the craft slammed into the rocky surface, skidding and bouncing across the barren landscape. As the dust settled, Eugene kicked open the hatch, stumbling out into the harsh glare of the moon's sun. Vortis emerged behind him, compound eyes squinting against the light. Before either could catch their breath, a dozen figures materialized from behind the jagged rocks, weapons trained on the unlikely pair. The leader stepped forward, his scaly green skin and elongated snout marking him as a Xanthorian. Yellow eyes widened in surprise as he took in the sight of a human boy and a Tak Tak warrior, battered but alive. Well, well, the rebel said, voice gruff but not unkind. What have we here, a human and a Tak Tak working together? Now I've seen everything. The Xanthorian raised a scaly brow. That remains to be seen. I am Raxus, leader of this cell, and you boy have a lot of explaining to do. As the rebels led them away at blaster point, Eugene caught Vortis's eye. The Tak Tak's mandibles twitched in what might have been a smirk. They were alive, but far from safe. And with the fate of the galaxy hanging in the balance, they would need all the allies they could get. In the rebel base, a warren of caves and tunnels hidden deep beneath the moon's surface, Raxus paced before Eugene, his clawed hands clasped behind his back. Vortis stood to the side, flanked by armed guards, his compound eyes tracking the Xanthorian's every move. Start talking, boy, Raxus growled, his snout inches from Eugene's face. What do you know of the Tak Tak invasion? Eugene swallowed, the weight of the moment settling on his narrow shoulders. He thought of his ruined colony, of the children sold like chattel in the Craxon hub, of Zephyr's sacrifice. He met Raxus's gaze, jaw set with determination. I know they plan to attack Xanthoria, to steal your medical technology for their cloning experiments, and I know how to stop them. The rebel leader's eyes narrowed, searching Eugene's face for any hint of deception. Finding none, he leaned back, scales rasping as he rubbed his chin. And what's in it for you, human? Why should we trust someone who consorts with the enemy? He jabbed a clawed finger at Vortis, who hissed in response. He held out the glowing artifact, 
its light casting strange shadows on the cave walls. And because with this, we have a chance to turn the tide, to strike a blow against the Tak Tak they'll never forget. Raxus took the orb, turning it over in his clawed hands. A slow smile spread across his reptilian face. Well then, Eugene Morgan, it seems we have much to discuss. As the rebels gathered around, eager to hear the human's plan, Vortis shifted uncomfortably, mandibles clicking in agitation. The boy's decision to aid the Xanthorians galled him, a betrayal of the Tak Tak way. But as he listened to Eugene outline his strategy, saw the fire in the young human's eyes, a grudging respect bloomed in the warrior's thorax. The boy was a survivor, a fighter, just like him. And perhaps, Vortis mused, there was more to life than blind obedience to a cruel empire. Perhaps this human could show him a different path. As the rebels dispersed to make preparations, Eugene caught Vortis's gaze. The Tak Tak stared back, compound eyes unreadable. A moment of understanding passed between them, a recognition of the long, hard road ahead. They had started as enemies, but now, against all odds, they were allies, united in a common cause, a desperate fight against an implacable foe. The battle for Xanthoria, for the fate of the galaxy itself, was about to begin, and Eugene Morgan, the boy from Earth, would be at its center. In the rebel base, Eugene stood before a holographic display, the glowing orb clutched tightly in his hand. Raxus and the other Xanthorian rebels gathered around, their scaly faces grim with determination. The Tak Tak invasion fleet is set to depart from their main military installation in three days' time, Raxus said, pointing to a pulsing red dot on the star map. If we can infiltrate the base and sabotage their ships, we might just buy ourselves a fighting chance. Eugene stepped forward, jaw set. I want to help. Let me join the mission. A murmur of surprise rippled through the rebels. Vortis chittered in disbelief. You? What could a human whelp possibly contribute? Eugene met the Tak Tak's compound gaze unflinchingly. I've seen the inside of Tak Tak's ships. I know their technology, and I have a score to settle. Raxus rubbed his scaly chin, considering. The boy has a point. His knowledge could prove invaluable. Vortis hissed, mandibles quivering. I will not work with this, this primate. Eugene turned to the Tak Tak, voice low and intense. Vortis, you know as well as I do that the Tak Tak Empire is rotten to the core. They enslaved your people, just as they enslaved mine. Help us, and we can strike a blow against them they'll never forget. Vortis hesitated, compound eyes flickering. Then slowly he nodded. Very well, human, I will join your foolish mission, but do not expect me to save you when it all goes wrong. The rebel strike team moved swiftly, stealing Tak Tak armor and forging security clearances. Eugene and Vortis donned the chitinous suits, their faces hidden behind insectoid helmets. As they approached the base, Eugene's heart pounded beneath his stolen armor. The facility was a sprawling complex of angular metal and pulsing lights crawling with Tak Tak soldiers. At the security checkpoint, Raxus presented their forged clearances to the guards. For a tense moment, Eugene was sure they would be discovered, but the guards waved them through and the team slipped inside. Once within the base, they split up. Eugene and Vortis made their way to the control room, while the others planted explosive charges at key structural points. Eugene's fingers flew over the alien keypad, his mind racing as he hacked into the base's computer systems. Vortis watched the door, plasma rifle at the ready. Hurry, human, the Tuk Tuk hissed. We don't have much time. With a final keystroke, Eugene grinned in triumph. I'm in. I've disabled the security systems and... The door exploded inward, revealing Kaztor and a squad of elite Tuk Tuk soldiers. The pirate's cybernetic eye gleamed with cruel recognition. Well, well, Kaztor purred, if it isn't my favorite escape slave, and you've brought a traitor with you, how delightful. Plasma bolts filled the air as the rebels and Tak Tak clashed. Eugene and Vortis dove for cover, returning fire with grim determination. In the chaos, Eugene was separated from the team. He found himself cornered by Kaztor, 
the pirate's massive form looming over him. Did you really think you could defy the Tuk Tuk Empire, boy? Kaztor sneered. Your primitive world will fall just like all the others. Earth will burn, and your people will be slaves. With a roar of defiance, Eugene lunged at Kastor, his stolen plasma rifle blazing. The pirate staggered back, caught off guard by the boy's ferocity. Kastor spun, mandibles clacking in rage. Eugene swung the baton with all his strength, crackling energy connecting with the pirate's cybernetic eye. Kastor screamed, the implant exploding in a shower of sparks. The giant tak tak crashed to his knees, clutching his ruined face. Eugene stood over his tormentor, the shock baton humming in his grip. My name is Eugene Morgan, I come from Earth, and we will never be slaves. He brought the baton down on Kaztor's head, and the pirate crumpled, unconscious. Eugene stood there, chest heaving, adrenaline surging through his veins. Around him, the battle still raged, plasma bolts scorching the air. Vortis appeared at his side, mandibles clicking in what might have been approval, not bad for a human. Now let's finish this. Together, they fought their way back to the reactor, where the rest of the team was pinned down. As more Tak Tak soldiers poured into the chamber, Eugene knew they were out of time. He looked at Vortis, a silent understanding passing between them. The Tak Tak warrior nodded grimly, then charged into the fray, drawing fire away from the others. Eugene sprinted for the reactor, ignoring the plasma bolt sizzling past his head. He reached the pulsing core, the glowing orb in his hand seeming to resonate with its energy. With a final, defiant cry, Eugene plunged the orb into the reactor's control panel, even as Tak Tak claws reached for him. The world went white, reality itself seeming to splinter and crack. A heartbeat later, the reactor detonated, a blinding flash of light and heat engulfing the chamber, the explosion ripped through the base, tearing apart ships and soldiers alike. In the heart of the inferno, Eugene Morgan stood tall, the fire of Earth's vengeance raging around him. With a final defiant roar, Eugene brought the shock baton crashing down on Kastor's skull. The pirate crumpled, his cybernetic eye flickering and dying. Eugene stood over his fallen foe, chest heaving, the baton still crackling in his grip. Eugene, Vortis's voice cut through the chaos. The Tak Tak warrior burst into the chamber, mandibles clicking in agitation. We need to go now. Eugene nodded, tossing the baton aside. He scooped up the glowing orb, its warmth pulsing against his palm. Together, they raced through the crumbling base, dodging falling debris and sparking wires. They reached the hangar just as the rest of the team arrived, their armor scorched and battered. Raxus waved them aboard a waiting shuttle, his scaly face grim. The shuttle rocketed away from the base, engines straining. Moments later, a series of deafening explosions ripped through the facility, the shockwaves buffeting the small craft. Eugene watched through the viewport as the Tak Tak installation collapsed in on itself, a plume of fire and smoke rising into the starry sky. Cheers erupted in the shuttle's cabin as the rebels celebrated their victory. Eugene slumped in his seat, exhaustion finally catching up to him. Vortis, seated beside him, gave a curt nod of acknowledgement. You fought well, human, the Tuk Tuk said, grudging respect in his voice. Perhaps there is more to your species than I thought. Back at the rebel base, Eugene found himself the center of attention. Xanthorians and other aliens crowded around him, clapping him on the back and offering words of praise. Even Raxus seemed impressed, his yellow eyes gleaming with approval. "'You've proven yourself a true ally to our cause, Eugene,' the rebel leader said. "'Your bravery and resourcefulness may have just turned the tide of this war.' As the rebels broke out the celebratory drinks, Vortis pulled Eugene aside. The Tak Tak's compound eyes were troubled, his mandibles twitching. "'What you did back there,' Vortis began, "'fighting against your own captors,' risking your life for a cause not your own. It has made me question many things. So Eugene cocked his head, surprised by the warrior's confession. What do you mean? All my life I have served the Tuk Tuk Empire, Vortis said. I believed in our superiority, our right to conquer and enslave. But seeing you a human, stand up to that tyranny, 
It has shaken my convictions. Before Eugene could respond, a shout rang out across the base. Raxus rushed over, his face grave. We just received a distress call from the Galactic Confederation, the rebel leader said. The Tak-Tak have launched an all-out assault on their headquarters. They're using some kind of new weapon, powered by the same technology as that orb you carry. I have to go, he said, meeting Raxus's gaze. This orb, it might be the key to stopping them. The Xanthorian frowned, concern etched in his scaly features. Eugene, you've already done so much. This isn't your fight. But the human boy shook his head, jaw set with determination. It is now... To Eugene's surprise, Vortis stepped forward. I'm coming with you, the Tuk Tuk said, ignoring the shocked murmurs of the rebels. You'll need someone to watch your back out there. Eugene hesitated, searching his former enemy's face for any hint of deception, but he saw only a flicker of something new, something like understanding. Okay, he said at last, holding out his hand. Partners. Vortis gripped the boy's forearm, a warrior's covenant. In that moment, the gulf between human and Tak Tak seemed to narrow, a bridge forming over the divide of conflict. As the rebel fleet prepared for departure, Eugene and Vortis stood on the launch deck, watching the ships power up around them. The glowing orb hung at Eugene's belt, its light pulsing in time with his heartbeat. You know, Eugene said softly, when I first met you, I hated you. I saw you as a monster, just like all the rest. Vortis clicked his mandibles thoughtfully, and now... Eugene met the Tak Tak's gaze, a hint of a smile tugging at his lips. The warrior nodded, compound eyes reflecting the stars above. No more words were needed. The understanding ran deeper than mere language. Together they boarded the flagship, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. The orb pulsed at Eugene's side, a reminder of the power he carried and the responsibility that came with it. Earth seemed a distant dream now, a fading memory of a simpler time, but as Eugene stood on the bridge, watching the fleet jump to hyperspace, he knew that he carried a piece of his homeworld with him, in his heart, in his unbreakable human spirit. He was Eugene Morgan, a boy from Earth, and he would fight not just for himself, but for all the worlds that suffered under the Tak Tak's tyranny, for Xanthoria, for the Galactic Confederation. For the future. The rebel fleet burst out of hyperspace, weapons primed and shields raised. Before them loomed the beleaguered Galactic Confederation headquarters, its once gleaming spires now pitted and scorched by Tak Tak fire. Swarms of insectoid fighters buzzed around the massive station, blasting away at its dwindling defenses. On the bridge of the rebel flagship, Eugene gripped the tactical display, his knuckles white. Beside him, Vortis chittered orders to the ragtag assortment of ships under his command. The unlikely allies exchanged a tense nod, their past animosity subsumed by the urgency of the moment. All ships engage the enemy, Vortis snarled, his voice crackling over the comm. Draw their fire away from the station. The rebel fleet surged forward, plasma cannons and missile batteries spitting death into the Tak Tak ranks, Bug-like ships exploded in gouts of flame, their chitinous hulls shattering under the onslaught. But the Tak Tak were far from beaten. A phalanx of heavy cruisers swung about, their spinal-mounted cannons glowing with baleful energy. Searing beams of destruction sliced through the rebel formation, vaporizing fighters and frigates alike. Fyogene watched in horror as a rebel destroyer its hull pierced by a dozen beams erupted in a silent fireball. Life pods spiraled away from the stricken vessel, only to be picked off by merciless tak-tak guns. We're getting slaughtered out here, a rebel captain cried, his voice edged with panic. Where's that secret weapon you promised us, human? Eugene looked down at the pulsing orb in his hand, its inner light flickering in time with his racing heartbeat. He closed his eyes, reaching out with his mind, trying to understand the alien device through sheer force of will. And then, in a flash of insight, he saw it. The orb was more than just a power source. It was a conduit, a means of tapping into the fundamental forces that bound the universe together. With it, he could disrupt the very fabric of reality itself. 
Eugene's eyes snapped open, his jaw set with grim determination. Vortis, I need you to lead a diversionary attack on the Tac Tac flagship. Draw their attention away from me. I have to try, Eugene said, his voice steady. It's the only way to stop them. Vortis stared at him for a long moment, mandibles clicking softly. Then he nodded. Very well, but if you get yourself killed, I'll never forgive you. Eugene cracked a smile. Wouldn't dream of it, bug brain. As Vortis barked orders to his squadron, Eugene sprinted to the hangar bay. He vaulted into the cockpit of a sleek, arrow-shaped fighter, its hull emblazoned with the rebel insignia. The canopy hissed shut around him as he powered up the engines, the orb glowing softly in a specially designed cradle beside him. With a roar of thrusters, Eugene's fighter leapt from the hangar, plunging into the maelstrom of battle. Plasma bolts crisscrossed the void, the flare of explosions painting the stars in shades of fire. Eugene wove through the chaos, his fighter dancing around the wreckage of shattered ships. His fingers flew over the controls, coaxing every last ounce of speed and agility from the craft. Ahead, the Tac Tac flagship loomed like a monstrous insect, its carapace bristling with gun batteries and missile pods. Eugene gritted his teeth, aiming his fighter straight for the heart of the beast. But as he closed in, the flagship's defences came to life, filling the void with a storm of flak and tracer fire. Eugene jinked and rolled, his shields flaring as they absorbed the hits. Alarms blared in the cockpit, warning of imminent system failure. Just as it seemed he would be torn apart, a squadron of rebel fighters swept in from the flank, lasers blazing. At their head was Vortis, his ship spitting plasma bolts with reckless abandon. Go, human, the Tuk Tuk roared over the calm. We'll keep them busy. Kyojin didn't hesitate. He punched his thrusters to full, rocketing towards the flagship's undefended underbelly. As he neared the massive vessel, he reached out with the orb, feeling its power surge through him like an electric current. With a final desperate cry, Eugene activated the device. A blinding pulse of energy erupted from the fighter, washing over the flagship in a tidal wave of crackling force. The effect was instantaneous. The Tak Tak's secret weapon, a pulsing mass of dark energy amidships, began to flicker and warp, its containment fields failing. Explosions rippled across the flagship's hull as power systems overloaded, setting off chain reactions in its ammunition stores. Eugene yanked his fighter into a steep climb, racing to escape the expanding fireball. But as he did, a barrage of plasma fire stitched across his shields, shattering them like glass. Warning klaxons screamed as the fighter's hull buckled, atmosphere venting into space. Through the cockpit canopy, Eugene saw Vortis's ship interpose itself between him and the incoming fire, absorbing the hits meant for the human. The Tak Tak's craft shuddered under the onslaught, its hull rupturing in a dozen places. No! Eugene screamed, helpless to intervene as Vortis's ship erupted in a ball of plasma and shrapnel. The fighter spiralled away, trailing flames and debris, vanishing into the inferno consuming the Tak Tak flagship. Eugene felt hot tears sting his eyes, blurring his vision. Vortis had sacrificed himself to save him, to give him a chance to escape. He wouldn't let that sacrifice be in vain. With a howl of mingled grief and rage, Eugene wrenched his crippled fighter around, streaking towards the rebel fleet. Behind him, the Tak Tak flagship exploded in a cataclysmic fireball, the shockwave buffeting his craft and sending it tumbling end over end. But Eugene held on, his jaw clenched, his heart pounding with a fierce determination. He would not let Vortis's death be for nothing, he would not let the Tak Tak win, not after all they had taken from him. As he limped back to the rebel flagship, Eugene opened a channel to the fleet, his voice ringing with a newfound authority. All ships press the attack, he commanded, the orb glowing brightly at his side. The Tak Tak are vulnerable, drive them back, for Vortis and for all the worlds they've enslaved. Eugene watched, his heart swelling with a fierce pride. As the rebel fleet drove the Tak Tak into full retreat, their once mighty armada reduced to a fleeing rabble. They had won. Against all odds, they had struck a blow against the Empire that had taken everything from him. 
But even as the rebels celebrated their victory, Eugene felt a hollow ache in his chest. Vortis was gone, the unlikely friend who had started as his bitterest enemy. The tak tak who had shown him that even the most hardened heart could change. Eugene clutched the orb tightly, feeling its warmth suffuse his being. He had lost so much, but he had gained something too, a purpose, a reason to keep fighting. For Vortis, for Earth, for all the beings, human and alien alike, who longed to be free. The battle was over, but Eugene's war was just beginning. As the rebel fleet limped back to the Galactic Confederation headquarters, Eugene sat in the medbay, staring blankly at the bulkhead. Around him, the wounded groaned and medics rushed to and fro, but the human boy was oblivious to the chaos. His thoughts were consumed by the image of Vortis's ship vanishing in a ball of flame, of the friend he'd found in the most unlikely of places. The door hissed open and Raxus entered, his scaly face etched with concern. The Xanthorian placed a clawed hand on Eugene's shoulder, his touch surprisingly gentle. The Confederation has called a special session to honor your bravery, Raxus said. They want to present you with their highest award for valor. Eugene looked up, his eyes hollow. I don't want their medals, I want Vortis back. Eugene said nothing, his gaze returning to the featureless wall. Raxus squeezed his shoulder once more before leaving him to his grief. The ceremony was a grand affair, held in the Confederation's Great Hall. Eugene stood on the dais feeling small and insignificant amidst the towering aliens in their formal robes. The glowing orb hung heavily at his side, a reminder of all he had lost. As the Confederation's leader draped a medal around his neck, Eugene scanned the crowd. His heart leapt into his throat as he spotted a familiar figure near the back, cloaked and hooded. Zor-El. After the ceremony, Eugene pushed through the throng of well-wishers, ignoring their congratulations and platitudes. He cornered Zor-El in a quiet alcove, his eyes blazing with anger. What are you doing here? Eugene demanded, his voice tight. Zorl threw back his hood, his compound eyes glittering. I came to congratulate you, dear boy. You played your part perfectly. Eugene's brow furrowed. What are you talking about? The Tak Tak nobleman chuckled, a dry, clicking sound. Did you really think your escape, your adventures, were mere chance? I orchestrated everything, Eugene. I needed someone to infiltrate the Rebel Alliance, to bring about the downfall of the Tak Tak Empire from within. Zorl spread his clawed hands. A small price to pay for the greater good, don't you think? The Tak Tak Empire was a blight upon the galaxy, a cancer that needed to be excised. And you, my boy, were the perfect tool for the job. Rage, hot and blinding, surged through Eugene's veins. He lashed out, his fist connecting with Zorl's chitinous face. The Tak Tak stumbled back, more surprised than hurt. Vortis died because of you, Eugene screamed, tears streaming down his cheeks. He was my friend and you took him from me. Zorl rubbed his mandibles, his expression unreadable. A traitor's fate is no more than he deserved. Eugene stared at the Tak Tak, his chest heaving. In that moment he realized that Zorl, for all his talk of the greater good, was no better than the empire he claimed to oppose. They were all the same, these powerful aliens, moving the younger races around like pawns on a chessboard. Without another word, Eugene turned and fled. Pushing past the startled delegates and dignitaries, he ran through the twisting corridors of the Confederation headquarters, his mind racing. He couldn't stay here, couldn't bear the weight of their gratitude and praise, not when it was all built on a lie. Eugene burst into the hangar bay, his eyes darting over the rows of gleaming spacecraft, his gaze settled on a small, single-occupant shuttle, its lines sleek and fast. Perfect. The human boy clambered into the cockpit, his fingers flying over the controls. The shuttle's engines roared to life, the deck vibrating beneath his feet. Eugene punched in a random set of coordinates, not caring where they took him. Anywhere was better than here. As the hangar doors irised open, and the shuttle blasted into the void, Eugene felt a weight lift from his shoulders. He was free now, beholden to no one but himself. The galaxy stretched out before him, vast, 
and infinite. In the quiet of the cockpit, Eugene's thoughts turned to Vortis. The Tak Tak warrior had started as his enemy, but had become so much more. A friend. A brother. Eugene's heart ached at the memory of their final moments together, of the sacrifice Vortis had made. He would honor that sacrifice. He would live the life Vortis had given him, even if it meant forging a lonely path through the stars. Eugene leaned back in his seat, watching the swirl of hyperspace outside the viewport. Earth. He had to get back to Earth, to warn his people of the dangers that lurked in the cosmos. They had to be ready, had to be strong. But as the shuttle hurtled through the void, Eugene couldn't shake the feeling that his journey was far from over. The quantum singularity, the glowing orb that had started it all, still hung at his side. He could feel its power thrumming through him, whispering of secrets yet to be unveiled. And then there was Vortis. Eugene knew with a certainty that defied logic that his friend was still out there somewhere, that their paths would cross again, in this life or the next. The ghost of Vortis would always be with him, a reminder of the bonds that could form across the vastness of space and time, a reminder that, no matter how lost he might feel, Eugene was never truly alone. The human boy smiled, a small sad thing. He reached out, his fingers brushing the cool metal of the orb. Whatever the future held, whatever challenges lay ahead, he would face them head on. For Vortis. For Earth. For himself. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.